Hey folks, welcome to another VR video. I'm here with Don, VR gamer dude. That's me. And this is kind of a cool thing. We, we've had conversations both on my channel and on his in the past. And we happen to be in person together. Yeah, I know. It's, it's an amazing thing to be able to come together in real life. Especially now. Like, it's it's... It's been a long time coming. No, it really honestly. Has. Well, like since what, 2018? I think the last time we got together? It was either 2018 or 2019. The, yeah, the last time there. we saw each other, I think, was PAX East. PAX East, yeah. Uh, in Boston, which was a whirlwind trip, which was kind of similar to the whirlwind trip we've just experienced, to be perfectly honest. You know, I got to agree. I got to agree. It feels um, really familiar. <laughs> I'm not going to go talking about PAX East today. Uh, you can go back to either of our channels, uh, either 2018 or 2019, and you can find lots of cool footage of us being glass cube booth babes at uh, we were booth the babes. Boston Convention Center. <laughs> we were booth we were babes. Booth That's hilarious. Babes. That's awesome. Uh, so. But this week we're not booth babes. Uh, we were... We're both part of a program called the Quest Ambassador Program, uh, which is a collaboration with Meta. Uh, we were not brought on as Meta Ambassadors. We actually joined this program because both of us have had a long history with the Oculus brand. A long history. He's had a slightly longer history than mine, but truly... Uh, We've both worked with many devices. If you watch either of our channels, we've both worked with Pimax. We've both worked with Vive. We've both worked with, oh, you name it. I mean, all of them. We could spend hours just listing out headsets, honestly. Um, but the reality of the situation is we both have some brand loyalty to Oculus because they make good products. No, they really do. I mean, they, 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 you know, they brought VR back from the dead, Eric. And I mean, I, you know, being the old guy, once again, I'll, I'll wax nostalgic for one second. I got to see it rise and fall in the nineties. And if it wasn't for Oculus's Kickstarter back on the DK one, we wouldn't be sitting here with virtual reality today. I mean, and not where it is right now. Right. So, and I think the, the thing that is confusing about the ambassador program to some people is people think Meta recruited us to buy our opinion or Meta paid us off or things of that nature. And, and the reality is uh, we work very closely with Meta resources and with third party resources. All the time. And with developers uh, to try to plan out what we're going to work on to to improve the quality of what we're providing on our channels uh it it sometimes involves kind of being like press where we get press briefs uh kind of pre game launches uh so that we can prepare to cover those games Sometimes it's actual developer sit-downs. Sometimes it's providing feedback about specific features that we'd like to see for content creation or specific features in general that we'd like to see. Not just with Oculus products, but with VR products in general. I mm -hmm. cover games on Steam. I cover games on App Lab. I cover games on itch.io. I cover games from the Quest store, from the Rift store, you name it. And all of that is supported entirely through this program. It's not a cover my meta thing or cover my Oculus thing. It's really to support virtual reality. Always. So I don't know if you have a different spin on that. You know, but... I, I, Eric, I got I to tell you, I, I think it's exactly that. And, you know, obviously, yes, we are what you would call MetaQuest ambassadors. So, you know, there is a little bit more of a brand loyalty to Oculus there or to Meta, so to speak. But I agree, it, it is not just to foster that. It's to foster VR in general and to get 
the the billion people into virtual reality, so to speak. So, you know, I, I got to tell you, I, I am blessed to be a part of this program. And I, I, and, and I feel the same way. And it allows for experiences like the one that we have embarked on this week. Uh, a very short while ago, uh, the representatives that work with us reached out and said, hey, do you have availability first week of May for a few days to come to Burlingame, California, which for me, I have availability. That's a pretty long drive for you. Pretty uh, much every day to go to Burlingame, California. You know, I yeah. eat here pretty regularly yeah. uh, because I live literally over the hill from where we visited this Absolutely. week. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I do not. <laughs> but through the program, what was amazing was they flew... They actually offered it to the entire ambassador program. Unfortunately, some folks couldn't make it. But there were, I think, 13 or 14 creators affiliated with the program that got to come out here. And we've been talking in Discord and Twitter and YouTube and other places for months now. Um, I've been in the program since last November, I think. And we we joined right time. about the same time, yeah. And what, what I really want to stress is when we joined this program, we weren't told change your content or told that we have to have anything approved or what have you. Like they said, you make good content, keep doing that. That's it. And that's all I've done. That's all Don's done. And it's remarkable that for some reason they still like us. Because sometimes we're not really all that positive about what we're talking about. Well, there's times that that's merited. So. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and with this particular relationship with this brand, they see that because they see our content and they work with us to try to improve those things. So I just want to stress before we start talking about what this experience has been about, that's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, and my hope is that this helps not just ourselves as ambassadors within this program, but also other content creators, developers to have a better relationship, and just general exposure to both the current VR users and people that might not even know what VR is which is the same goal I've had since I started doing the this beginning. stuff. Exactly. I think um, that's why a lot of us started. Exactly, exactly. And that hasn't changed at all. Mm -mm. Uh, so we are here in Burlingame, California right now. It is the end of a exhausting two days. Some I good exhaustion. Though. Yeah, I, I described it uh, when someone asked if they could come hang out with us. I said, look... Literally, this is like if you went to an amusement park and you wanted, it was a huge amusement park and you wanted to see every single thing and ride every ride in a single day. So you get up the crack of dawn and have breakfast and you get there before they open and you stand at the gate and you try to go in and then you stay until they close and they're kicking people out. That's what this has been. It's kind of what it felt like. I agree. It's, it's been it's been a whirlwind. I mean, let me tell you, I mean, from the get-go, I mean, we had, what, like a couple of weeks notice? Yeah, um, it was a short so, window of time. I mean, and, you know, there, there were ambassadors coming from Europe. There yeah. were, I mean, from all over the world that, that you know, we, I, I had to personally, like, move hell and high water with my own life schedule um, and, you know, my work schedule to get out here. But I wouldn't have traded it for the world because it, not just because of what we got to see, you know, but because of the connections that we made. These are people that we interact with every day through Discord and Twitter and on groups and, and we watch videos of each other. And but, but we never really had that personal connection that we were able to gain um, through doing this. And honestly, of all of the people that were here as part of the program this week, you and I, I the only person I had met was you. Absolutely, same. And um, so... 
I've collaborated with some of these people multiple times and never met them face to face. And the only other experience I can say that I've had like that was when we used to have the OG Oculus Connects. Yeah, back in the day. Um, and I'm absolutely hoping that we have that again. Oh, God, me too, please. Whether it's this year or soon. Um, and, you know, we heard similar feedback from Oculus employees this week. Absolutely. Um, because, I mean, this was, this was honestly the first time either they or we really had the opportunity to do this in this type of a setting uh, since the program started. No, yeah, I mean, it, and, that, and I think it, it was time, though. I mean, I think that we had finally come to a point where it was feasible. To exactly. Do this. And, 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 you know, I mean, obviously it centered around what we came here to do. And, I mean, that was to see the launch of the Meta Store. I, you know, and uh, I got to tell you, it, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I don't know what your take on it is, but I really think that they have outdone themselves with this. I mean, and the fact that it is actually a a very shoppable, very interactive environment, it, and, and it really brings home what we try to do every day on our channels is is, is, is c- it conveys what these technologies can do for the the, the, the consumer. You know, and, and in a way where we can talk about VR a hundred times, but until you put that headset on your head, you're never going to get it, you know, and having the ability for them to go in and, and actually put the headset on and have their friends watch them on the wall, it just, just outstanding. Um, I have a slightly different opinion. Okay. Uh, I, since prior to my channel have been going to seeking out really like retail demos of devices even the ones that i have in my home and i've gotten crap for that Mm -hmm. because i wanted to see what the experience is like Uh, i've done rift demos at six different retail stores Um, and i've had very similar experiences as a user to what's available in the store. What is different in the store from the VR front is that it kind of becomes a spectator experience. And I will say, you also had sort of a spectator experience when you went to Best Buy or Microsoft Store or what have you. Uh, the, The Meta Store also gives you the ability to share though a very small clip of your time in VR socially. And one thing that people need to understand is virtual reality is a very social thing. And when I started working with virtual reality, I thought this is the most isolated thing in the world because I'm putting this box on my face and covering my eyes and no one else can see what I'm doing in my screen. And when I started going into multiplayer experiences, the majority of it is little kids. This is true. And I don't really, I'm a little older than those little kids. I don't really participate in their humor or things of that nature. So I tend to jump out of that experience and either spend time with people like Dawn or visit these very intended to be social applications alone and explore that world as a world of its own. Um, So from a VR standpoint, it's it's a quest demo. There are four games that you can try. I think you tried real VR fishing. I I did real VR fishing, yeah. I think um, they had Beat Saber, we had uh, Supernatural, and um, Golf? Yes, Golf Plus. Golf Plus, by, that's by, right. By Golf Top Plus, Golf. yeah. Um, I did not actually do the experience. So tell me, was, as a user, the experience any different for you? I can say it, if I would have been new, Okay, the the way that they had the experience set up from the onboarding to the 
placing of the headset on my head um, to the explanation from the handler as to what I was going to go through was the typical demo experience that you know we have all received at show after show after show. Okay. But it was very much more relaxed because you're not in that environment that you get a lot of times with these you know forced demos and very quick demos. Um, and I, I got to say, the guys that we had there that day, and I and I take this from a retail mm -hmm. management standpoint. You know that. I mean, yeah, I used course. to be a district manager for a defunct company now called Radio Shack. Uh, for those of you who may remember that, um, and uh, you know, so when I walk into that place, I'm I'm judging it on a completely different standard. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the what I really really loved was the employees. The employees were right. just knowledgeable about the products and they were so patient with all of us. And, and I saw that translating over to that demo experience and how they onboarded me and how they got me there. And, you know, I went through the motions. I mean, obviously, I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, when, the, when the lady asked me, sir, have you ever tried VR? Right. And I was like, um, no, no, I haven't. And, <laughs> you know, just to kind of play along and, you know, and, and, and the way that they handled that was great. Now, the demos themselves... I probably would have picked a little bit of a different content. I know they're going for a, a mixed reality capture. Right. Um, so obviously that is going to limit the content that they're showing in there. Exactly. And I think that you are going to start to get the hardcore gamer that goes in there and they want to try something a little more robust. Different. So it, So I actually had a conversation uh Actually, we had a conversation with someone at lunch. Uh, one of the employees actually popped in uh, from the VR division at, at Oculus, uh, which was a surprise, actually. And, and they were Nothing talking. was great. And, and they were talking to us about how we felt about the store. And you know, we had a conversation. We talked about it. It's not really right to have experiences that can be like that often circulated meme of someone falling through the monitor at, at a Microsoft store, which legitimately Happens. happened. Yeah. Um, so, you know, those demos were provided by Oculus. The climb was pretty big title at the time, mm -hmm. and that's what happened. So I think they're conscious of... I think they're curated. I, I think yeah, they're very curated. Exactly. And and so they're, they're picking titles that are safe. Mm -hmm. um, and safe is the way to go for this type of demo, I think. Um, but mixed reality capture really limits the number of titles currently that they can do this with. Uh, and they, it felt like very safe titles. It's also, while these are all social titles, it's not the best social experience. I agree. Um, Beat Saber has a multiplayer mode. Real VR Fishing has an outstanding sit and chat with your friends mode, basically. Well, and um, I was going to say, too, that the, the stage area that yeah. we were on was large enough to For have multiple players. some sort of a, a multiplayer. And, you know, right. I always kind of equated that to when I shop in a store, I love to go shopping with a friend. Because it's like, ooh, check this out. Ooh, check that out. And, and you know, we kind of play off of each other that right. way. So being able to say, oh, man, let's go down to the Meta Store and let's go try, you know, let's go try some Beat Saber. Or exactly. Let's go try that and let's do it together. Right. Would have been a completely better experience. And and that's what I'm saying is why I was like, it mm -hmm. was, it, it it's, it's cool. And I get that. There may be social engagement that comes from you sharing your 30 second mixed reality clip, but I kind of feel like they box themselves in I, I think with so that as well. mixed reality. I think they, I think um, they did. I, I feel like if they actually focused on that social piece, because all four of those games, you could have multiplayer. You could have four people lined up playing Beat Saber, or you can have people fishing, or you can have people golfing, or you can have people playing. Actually, I don't know if Supernatural has. Multiplayer. I don't know about um, multiplayer. But, but the well, others. I mean, I mean bringing yeah. the social piece of all social pieces. I mean, what are exactly. they pushing right now? Yeah. I know it would be hard as hell to onboard people into that, but if you had already some avatars set up, why are they not like dropping them into Horizon? I, I think Horizon World is not necessarily ready for that right now. I, I agree with that. I just, I, I think when you're talking, the if you really want to show mm -hmm. them the social aspect, sure. and this is what 
Meta is trying to cram down everybody's throat right now, right. that would be another really good way to kind of uh, proliferate that whole, this is our metaverse, this is what we're trying to build, this is the experience that you're going to have inside said metaverse, where you're actually going to be able to see your friend, talk to your friend, showing that level of interactivity. I don't currently believe that that's their vision for the future. You know me, I'm pie in the sky, man. I'm like, <laughs> you know. So. What I'm trying to say, though, is... Horizon Worlds is not at a level that it would be a good demo that would make people want to use a headset on a very regular basis. No, actually, basis. That, that's a topic for a whole nother chat. I was going to say, you know, is it ever kind of? But you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that on a yeah, different Yeah, I, I think, I think that, that, that's, that's a completely different that topic. That is a completely different topic. Uh, so. What I do want to talk about, though, is the non-VR stuff, too. Well, and the, uh, that's great. Yeah, I was actually going to want to segue into that as yeah. well. So. So we had other devices in the Meta Store. So, you know, obviously they are focusing on all of the available metaverse technology or meta technology that they're calling it or whatever. And the other things that we saw there were Ray-Ban Stories. Um, got a chance to use those today. And I got to tell you, I am very impressed with these glasses. Um, I, I know you have used some other, um, yeah. <clears throat> I guess they call them smart glasses. I don't know that I can call it smart glasses is, if it doesn't have a screen. So but, uh, people call them smart glasses, but I actually call these camera glasses. That's what I'm saying. I, I think they're like media um, glasses. That's what I, or, I, yeah. I have a collection of snap glasses, mm -hmm. uh, like these ones right here. These are the snap spectacles version two. Okay. Uh, I Take have, them out. Take them out. I have used these for a good year or so um i got them very cheaply okay. um i buy everything through resale shops i bought these through shop goodwill um and what i liked about them is i've been wearing a mask forever they've got this little nose clip right here that actually kind of helps keep the mask weighted down and they fit over my glasses pretty well the other thing I really like is shooting video with them because the video quality is really pretty outstanding, to be perfectly honest with mm -hmm. you. Um, so I honestly wore these on the walk over to the Meta store from our hotel. I do. I, I remember that. I recorded footage that you will see when I post something at some point in the future. It's been kind of chaotic, so I can't tell you it's exactly. It's a little chaotic if you can't tell by our energy level and yeah. our voices here. We are yeah. just about... Um, but I used these the entire day of the meta adventure at the at the meta campuses, um, not in any way knowing that they were going to hand us a bag that had those in it. Had no idea. Um, and I didn't want to like the Ray Ban stories. So 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 now that you got a chance to use them all day today, though. Tell me why you like them. I did not want to like the Ray-Ban stories. He did not want to like the Ray-Ban stories. He really didn't. I really like these uh, a lot. Um, and I assumed that the Ray-Ban stories were going to be uncomfortable because I already have glasses on and I can't not wear glasses. Um, let's, let, let, let's test that. Yeah. You guys don't normally see me in my specs here, so I, I do take those off for light glare when I'm recording. But I'm happy to say, now granted, my glasses are, are small, okay? I do wear small glasses. As do I. I chose them for under, you know, headset use. Mm -hmm. But I'm blown away by how well these fit over my glasses. And, and here's why. The pressure is here. It's, it's, it, 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 it's like it clamps to my head, but not so tightly that it's annoying or, or something that I can't bear. And, and what that does is that keeps them kind of hovering away from my glasses. Yes. And it doesn't have that double glasses feel. So. And I do have to say, the Snap Spectacles have that double glasses feel. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I also had seen previously only video footage from the Ray-Ban stories. Mm -hmm. And the video footage didn't seem all that great. Whereas, like I said, 
the snap spectacles make pretty good video quality. Yeah. Um, but I had never, honestly, until today, seen an image, just a still image, exported from Ray Ban stories. And I think we're talking a we're talking a native 1080p image is, right. is what these give you exactly. Um, so. And and I think part of the problem that I had with the video it, it itself is kind of warped. If you if you put it at like a 1080p from from the 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 stories, um, whereas the spectacles actually kind of gives you a very nice clean crop. Mm -hmm. um, the stories, if you put them in kind of the square one by one mode, look okay, okay. Um, from what I've seen. But again, I had never seen a still image from them. So today, my plan was to use the stories for a few minutes, give up on them, go back to the spectacles, use the spectacles for the rest of the day. Um, and I ended up spending the entire day, and Don can attest to this, using my stories Nothing to take stories. pictures. Yeah. I did not pull out my phone. I did not switch to my spectacles, even though I planned to do so. And I didn't shoot any video. And it doesn't matter, honestly, because I captured moments. Mm -hmm. I captured people jumping in the air. Yeah, I was impressed by that frame rate. Yeah, it... Like I, I would, I can't even capture that using my phone device. Like it, 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 it wouldn't. They'd be on the ground and by was, the time and, it and takes it that clear. shot. And it wasn't blurred. It was extremely clear. Uh, granted, we use these in broad daylight because they're sunglasses. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can't tell you. Oh yeah, they work great in concert lighting, or they work great. I, I can't tell you that yet. Um, but. I came out of today okay with them. Yeah. Very happy with how they fit on my face with these on underneath them. And I will definitely continue to use them. Yeah, same. And, and you know, I fully expected to pull these out of the box today, take a few snaps with them, throw a few Instagram pics out there, say, hey, thank you so much. I used them. Mm -hmm. And they were just going to go right back in the box, right. you know, and, and I got to say now I want to explore more of what these things are capable of, not just the pictures and the video. You know, I want to start exploring the off ear audio. Exactly. I, I want to actually start using my assistant functions and I want to take a phone call with them. And, you know, so I guess smart glasses in the sense that they do everything but have a screen. You know, I, I mean, it, the fact that I can use my assistant with them makes it valuable to me. And another reason I didn't want to like them is because I have the audio portion of that mm -hmm. that I've worked with Sony um, as, as part of their Future Labs program to help build up. Yeah. Um, so I, I use the Sony Link Buds pretty religiously. Um, and those are kind of my go-to mm -hmm. because they're not closed off in the air and you can hear the world around you. What I noticed, and I have only very briefly tried the audio function, to be perfectly honest. We were on a whirlwind tour of oh, San Francisco and, and whirlwind. today. whirlwind. I mean, so much Literally wind. wind. So much wind. Yeah. Um, and it... <laughs> So I didn't use the audio function as much as I would have liked to to be like this isn't an evaluation of that is what I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, it can't um, be. I mean, we weren't in the right environment. But for that. I will say, like other people were playing with theirs, we couldn't hear noise bleed from their from 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 the glasses at all, which was and, and it, again in that situation, maybe not real world example because it was a noisy environment. It was a very noisy environment, but. That kind of impressed me because the quest, if somebody's pretty close to you, you're you know, going to hear, can hear that. it. No, they can hear it. My, yeah. my kids can hear it across the room. Exactly. You know. So the noise pipe that they have uh, that, that shoots down so that you can hear audio is, I think, an improvement over what they have in the Quest 2 mm -hmm. today. That may carry over into other VR, AR well, devices. It, yeah. I mean. Um, yeah. I can't tell you. 
Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Time will tell. Yeah, I mean. exactly. But going back to the store experience, I'd never touched these things before. Never. never. Seen them. Seen ads for them. Yeah. And know. I got these glasses recently, and I could have gotten Ray-Ban stories, and I got a sales pitch at Lens Crafters that was about two seconds long. Mm -hmm. That was, oh, yeah, those things... Uh, you can take pictures and listen to music. And they give you the selection of frames to choose from, and that was it. Mm -hmm. The thing, again, going back to what you were talking about, that is different at the Meta Store is they have the whole selection of frames there, and you can do just that. You can walk in and not talk to a person. And they can point at the wall, and you can look at them. But you have people that are extremely knowledgeable about the product that can tell you what they're allowed to tell you about that product. Like, there are certain things that have not become public knowledge yet that they legitimately can't tell you. Obviously. And they may honestly not know, to be honest, but they've been trained pretty well to answer a lot of questions that... I have some video that I'll, I'll share later that this guy that was there... Uh, that is not a content creator, but he was there escorting a content creator, just rapid fire, just asking question after question mm -hmm. after question. And the gentleman that was demoing this product did not flinch and answered honestly every one about, of those questions. You're talking questions. about the uh, Ray-Bans guy. He was yeah. phenomenal. And there were two of them, and they were yeah. both just as good. Yeah. Um, they'll... They have a demo phone that they pull out. You can actually play with them, mm -hmm. take photos, take video. Well, like I said, and every one of them was live. No matter which one you put exactly. on, it was ready to go, yeah. and you could test it out fully. Exactly. And 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 the thing that was cool was like we I I witnessed every feature of this thing being tested in a five minute span, mm -hmm. and that's what it takes. Is that Two to five minutes can sell you or dissuade you from well, a product. I can tell you from a sales perspective, I mean, you're going to make that sale in the first 30 seconds right. of your presentation. And, like, Steve Nose was in the store with us. Uh -huh. He played with them. Uh, Fluffy played with them. Uh -huh. Like, I looked at them, mm -hmm. and I watched... I, I, I was there more to evaluate how the you, employees worked. Yeah, I was going to say, you spent a lot of time talking to the employees and doing the portal demo. And then, yeah. And, and then I spent more of the, the VR time, right. which is just... That's just what I know. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and like you said, those guys, and I know Tech uh, Manju was over yeah. there. He spent a lot of time talking to them about these. Um, but the, the employees were so passionate about your interest and your excitement your, on the yeah, product your experience exactly they, they were there to create an experience eric it, right it, it, you know and that's and i'm telling you that was what made the entire thing gold right they, you know they made the store right and and i and i can honestly say i think that's why you have a different opinion of the vr experience because i didn't get to experience it exactly and I didn't. I got to see the tail end of it, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah. Um, so from an outcomes perspective, it didn't really measure up to what I'd like to see. Yeah, and and, I, and it was. And I think if you would have gone through the whole onboarding, and it, you mm -hmm. would probably have looked at it with the same eyes that I did of the, what is the first time VR users stumbling into the Meta Store? Right. Okay. What are what are you know? I have never seen the VR right. before. Okay, they set it up so nicely and so perfectly as to what I was about to experience and and how to get in and I mean it was just the the it was the right amount of hand holding for not just a new user but also someone who is accustomed to it. So I want to ask you a, a dumb question. Okay. When you were done with the experience, mm -hmm. did they say welcome back? I can't honestly remember. Because the person they, that they I watched... Really, they really should, though. That that should be every time you come out, they should say, welcome back. Because I didn't see it when, okay. with the person that I watched. Okay. And, and, and... Well, well, there you go. Any, anybody 
from Meta watching this that that needs to be SOP. Okay, the minute the people take off the headset, they should say, "Welcome back." I just wanted to mention that I hate acronyms. He means standard operating procedure. I, I know. I'm sorry. I'm an acronym. Guy. It's all good. No. Um, it's, uh, so, so yeah. So we got to try. So we did. We, we got these to out. Try these, and they're great. And charging case, even. I mean, they, it's a, they, you put them in the case, and the case charges them. I, it is, yes. It is great. You, you put the snap spectacles in the case. Yeah. Well, you know, I and, didn't have and the you snap can charge them. Eric, you put so you put first... the Bose frames in the case, <laughs> and you can charge them. <laughs> You can't put the in real lights in the case and charge them, and that's the only smart glasses I've ever had. So. Well, the in real light, um, this is not a product plug, by the way. No, um, I'm sorry. We're not even supposed to be. I just uh, saw them there, and I grabbed them. Yeah, because so. I brought them with me. Yeah. Yeah. The the real light, uh, which is my current uh, AR device, uh, because camera glasses are not an AR device. Yes, those are not an AR device. Uh, but these things, uh, you, you have to plug this into a phone mm -hmm. to power. As you will for quite a while with most AR devices. Hopefully so. not. Hopefully not, but you know, we're not there yet. And then that's not the purpose of this. We're, we're talking about meta stuff. So what are else we? did we see? Yeah, well, you know what I mean, we're just talking. So what else did we see in the store? Um, so we saw, spent, we saw VR, we saw the, the, the Ray-Bans, and then... So, you, and, the, and, and I, I want to explain that while I consider Ray-Ban stories camera glasses and Don considers Ray-Ban stories camera glasses with audio, um, the people working at the Meta store and really the people working on the product Consider this a first step to an augmented reality device. Um, well, and, and, I, and I'm not going to lie, future thinking, I can see it. Oh, uh, yeah. I can totally, what was I telling you? The, the minute I put those on, I was like, oh my God, if these had the capability of those other glasses mixed with all of the cool functionality that we already have here, mm -hmm. you got a home run. I mean, and I and I'm and we know that Meta is after they're chasing AR just like everybody else is. So I could see that at some point in the future. So going back to the Unreal Light, um, <laughs> which is basically the DK one of no, the DK one no, of we're in this DK1 stage. form factor of an AR device, mm -hmm. um, heavily copied already. We're not going to talk about who copies who, but. Yeah. Either way, uh, this is the form factor that's currently available in an AR device. It is really rough around the edges. I don't remember uh, the first experience I had with it. Actually, I do remember the first experience I had with, with an Oculus device. Uh, it was a demo of a game that never released that won a Oculus Game Jam that was a sort of flight simulator. What was it? Uh, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, but it was not very good. Um, and I dismissed the headset because I had this not very good experience with this game. Going back uh, to the why experiences important are important for first time VR right. users. And that's why Same. I think having those safe experiences are good. Okay. I just think the whole pitch for expanding and making it an everyday use uh, stepping into a virtual or augmented world situation uh, bringing a billion users into that type of ecosystem it would be better to not have it be an isolated single individual experience i agree um, but the majority of the time that i was in the meta store I spent having a demo with several of these things. Like lots of different versions of it. Lots of these. This is a Portal. Uh, there's also a Portal Plus, which is a larger version of a Portal. A Portal Go, which is a smaller version that has a nice little handle. Kind of wish they would given us that one because that one was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. I'm, uh, happy, to, I'm happy to get, get anything. Got. I mean, uh, it's kind of cool. But... This one uh, is the base model portal. 
The other one that they had was the Portal TV, which has no screen, but you just plug into your TV, and it kind of functions like an old school Xbox Connect. I was gonna say it looked kind of like a very small old school Xbox. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Xbox Connect, the thing that I did not mention is the mixed reality oh, yeah, sure. that's that's being projected on the screen. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily what you get as a clip. No, no, I know. So what, what, know what we're seeing on the screen. But what you see on the screen in the store is actually being a is a projection that's being projected from an Azure Connect that's mm -hmm. in the corner of the store, um, which I found kind of interesting because uh, the folks that work at Live uh, Giant Socks made that happen for mm -hmm. Live many years ago, right. uh, and I played with it and got it working on my system because I didn't have a green screen. It was perfect uh, with some imperfections. And I will say the in-store viewing experience when you're a spectator is it, completely imperfect. It was not that great, guys. No. It, it really, there was a lot of lag. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was good to the point where if your buddies were sitting there watching they're still going to be like cheering you on. It's going to be good. And yeah, you're going to see things like the high score. You're going to see things like hitting the beats with with the sabers. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm tired. But like making sure you hit those blocks, making sure you cut through them, seeing the score, seeing the multipliers, seeing it, all the combos. It's not going to be like... It's not perfect mixed reality. Exactly. That's, that's what I'm trying uh, to I felt like the clips that you guys have shared from the experiences used actual true mixed reality the, capture. The, the fishing clip that I shared was spot on. Yeah. I mean, it was great. And that looks great. But that takes a little bit of on headset processing mm -hmm. that they're not taking from the headset and then putting on the screen. Right. So it's not exactly the same experience as a spectator as you're going to get in that little chunk of gameplay that they share with you. Uh, and again, as a spectator, you're not real. I don't feel like it's going to draw you into being like, yeah, I want a VR headset any more than watching our content will. Exactly. Um, so like I wouldn't go, I, I, I wouldn't foresee having five people go into the store to watch somebody else play. No, it, it, you're not gonna you're not gonna see people going there with the specific intent to watch people right. play content on the big curved wall screen. Right. Which you know, by the way, when you're playing, it doesn't even project to the whole wall. Right. It, it is literally it's a, little, a, a little square section of that wall, and you've still and, got the advertisements playing on and, the side. And the, the thing and, that was a little disorienting about those advertisements is. Like, you might see over in the corner gameplay from Swarm, mm -hmm. and then in another corner gameplay from another game, and then random words popping up trying to sell you on a product while somebody's playing Beat Saber in yeah. front of you. Yeah. It was a little distracting. Like I will say that should blank out. Yeah. Like, yeah. So that was a little weird. Um, but again, this is this was the first day that they were open. Uh to anyone. And not even really open. Right. I mean, I mean, you know, like, geez, we were like the first, what, how many do we have in our group? 14? 14 people in the yeah, store. Yeah, so like the first 14 people outside of Meta employees to actually even see this thing. Right. Um, at least that's what they told us. Well, that's what, yeah, I, mean, I, I um, believe them, you know, I mean. So, and, and that's the other thing. Uh, I, I've completely deviated from Portal. We'll go back to that yeah, in just we'll a second. Yeah, we'll go back to Portal. But we actually when we got to the store, we're welcomed by the people that set up the store, yeah. like the, the manager of the store and, and, and his colleague. And they explained a little bit about why the store exists. Uh, I'm going to let Don talk about that because it involves words I don't say. So <laughs> well, do you recall that conversation? I'm really tired. Mm -hmm. um, um, I mean, obviously the store exists because we need it to be interactive. We need it to be virtual and we need to be able to put people into the devices to have them touch them, to have them use them. Like you said, the five minute demos, the things like that. Um, why does the store exist? Don doesn't remember why the store exists. I, don't. But, I was like bullshit uh, all the way through. No, that's totally fine. Uh, 
he got most of it right. So, I did. so those interactive experiences and having knowledgeable employees were important to the meta ecosystem uh, as a whole and retail in um, general and and so. their future state vision yeah. um the products that they're showcasing are the current generation of all of these products mm -hmm. uh, and i believe this will also be a place to showcase the future products that come out mm -hmm. when they are at retail launch which, no i and i i think this yeah. is going to be your first place that you're going to see those products I think this is going to be the first place that you're going to see this type of presentation well, of that's, those that's products. Where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Um, I'm not going to even say that this is going to be the only place that that type of presentation will come. I think this is really, this store exists because there was a space in their campus and this is an experiment. You know, and, that, and that's something we need to bring up. I mean, you know, for anybody watching it or anybody, you know, looking into the content that we've been putting out over the last couple of days, Keep in mind, this is a concept store. This this is not something that's going to be popping up in your local mall anytime soon. No. So. And, and it is a very small store. It was very it's, small. It's about 1,500 square feet, where if you go to an Apple store, it's about 22. I'd say it's about half of the size yeah, of a typical exactly. Apple retail And location. if you go to, like... If, if we had gone from the Meta store to the San Francisco flagship Apple store, which is gigantic, I think it's around 30,000 square well, feet. Well, that's a completely different thing. Right. I don't see that as something that Meta will focus on. No, and I don't. And, and, and right now, I'm sorry. I mean, they don't have the product lineup to put in it. I, I agree. And that, that's what I wanted to talk mm -hmm. about is this is a concept. It's an experiment. And it's something that currently features products that you can buy anywhere you want to. Absolutely. In many, many retail establishments. Uh, it's extremely small. So what that means is when the store opens to the public on Monday, uh, which I think this might be out by then, but if not... Shortly after. Sometime this week... Imagine that the store isn't open yet. <laughs> but when the store opens, there's already been people saying, I want to come in for the opening of the store. I want to come in to do this. I want to come in to do that. And if those people still all come to Burlingame, California, they may have an extremely long wait to get into the store. Yeah, because um, we were only, I mean, we were a group of 14 and we had to break in half. Yeah, and... That was kind of pushing it for the number of people that could really be in there, honestly. Comfortably? I would say maybe 10 people at a time. At, I would at, agree. Yeah. At, at most. 10 at max, comfortably right. in the store, able to actually get the full experience. Yeah. But the other thing is the Portal demo uh, is a multifaceted demo. Well, that's cool because I didn't get to see yeah. Any of the portal stuff. So I am so, fascinated to hear your thoughts. So on there this. are portals, all of the ones that I just described, they're they're kind of just arranged on a tabletop. Well, not just there, they were everywhere. I mean yeah. them on the wall. But, them, yeah. but but there's 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 kind of places that you can interact with them mm -hmm. in a small area. And then there's a giant TV with a portal TV above it that you can walk past and if it fixates on you you can actually move around and it demonstrates very well that the camera itself will pan with you it, it does track you. Um, yeah to and a point. It, some of the other devices I feel do it a little bit better which is weird uh, yeah I do. Um, which is strange because the portal TV being on a large device, you'd think, it would, you'd think it would be the best. You'd think it would be, yeah. But I feel like, as you were saying, it looks like a small connect. It really does. I think it's actually probably not as wide as the regular actual screen portal devices. I don't know. It may not. You know, um, really, I don't think it is. And what I will say is that's like the eye-catching, mm -hmm. like... Oh, that thing's actually following my... Yeah, way. Well, as I move. like tracking me. And then if you <clears throat> talk to people, there's a little room right behind it. Mm -hmm. You can slide the door open and closed. And you go in and they do, do a 
And that's where you kind made... of verbose <laughs> uh, demo of the Portal Go. Okay. And the Portal Go is not what we have here, but it's a. I I don't know the sizes of the screens, and I apologize for that. But it's a, probably an eight to ten inch screen with a handle. The entire cloth backing is a speaker. Okay. And it's got like a base that you can set it on so that it's plugged in and charging, but you can always just pull it off and take it wherever you need to in your home or business or what have you. And the demo that they have set up in that room, honestly, is too elaborate. Okay. We had about 40 to 45 minutes in the store each. Um, no, 40, for, for it was 45 minutes. Yeah, 45 minutes. I swear 40 minutes of my time was just All portal, portal demos. demos. Okay. Um, and some of that, there, there were a number of factors for that. But really, as you said earlier, 30 seconds, right? I kind of knew the features from the portal TV okay. outside. Okay. I wanted to see it in action. So going into the room, there's a representative that meets you. The representative, again, extremely knowledgeable about the product. But she asked me, hey, what do you know about the portal device? And I told her, seems to follow you as you move around. Seems to do that with both the audio and the video. Looks like it's good for web conferencing, works with Zoom, that type. Like Because there's copy on all of the devices. So like I read all right, of this right, stuff. Right, right. And afterwards, she's like, yeah, that's about it. You want to see how it works? Yep, I'd like to see how it works. And the presentation of how it works repeats that probably 15 times. So a little redundancy here. So it's a very cool demo. Uh, they actually have a little studio kitchen where there is a employee of the Meta store that interacts with the employee in the little room. Okay. They both have Portal Go devices. The employee in the kitchen trying to prepare lunch or dinner or what have you gets this call on their portal device from the employee in the room they do a great set of interactions they show off things like ar filters they show off pulling up a recipe on the device they show that you can do your zoom call or webex or blue jeans or microsoft teams like this thing supports pretty much every web conferencing tool at this point, which is impressive to be perfectly honest. That is actually impressive. Because a lot of similar devices have cropped up, especially during the pandemic. I was and it's say, like technology, this tech was like totally born of the pandemic. Right. And and but those other devices might be limited to one or two of those services right, where this one pretty much catches okay. it all for web conferencing. Okay. But they showed it in a kitchen setting. Like He's going to pull up a recipe for tacos and and that's kind of cool because it shows like you can use it for other yeah. things that, than a business setting but it was too elaborate and what may have stretched it is people kept coming into the room like if it was just a one-on-one -on -one interaction or just your family or just your group all goes in at once maybe it would have been a little bit shorter but both the person in the room and the person on the other side in that kitchen studio reiterated every step of the way, this is what it does, this is what it does, this is what it does. I think if they shorten that script mm -hmm. to three to five minutes, it's a killer demo for this device. Like I was absolutely sold on this Portal Go device that I had no plans on ever touching mm -hmm. from this because I work all day. I take calls on WebEx. I take calls on Zoom. I take calls on Microsoft Teams. I have one laptop screen. That's kind of dangerous, especially if you start getting direct messages from people that are related to the other people that are on the call and they pop up on the screen that you're sharing or other things like that. And that happens no, it does. constantly. Oh, it constantly does. In, in a business device. environment. So having a second screen alone was like this is kind of cool mm -hmm. but having that portability also was like 
Not that I would take it into the bathroom, but like maybe I'm going and getting a package at the door. When that happens, I'm like, oh, sorry, guys, I have to turn my camera off. So, so here's my here's my counterpoint, right? And I and I gotta ask because I have not played with Portal yet. Sure. What would differentiate something like that versus me just having a tablet? So, not much okay. is what I would say. Okay. Um, but I will say the audio quality on it was outstanding. Okay. Um, to the point where. I don't. Do you have a smart home device like? Uh, I, we have the Google. Uh, yeah. Like the whole Google Mini thing. So you have the Mini, right? I do have the Mini. Okay, yeah. I, ha- I don't have the full speaker. So, so, so there's multiple varieties of, of that. Of course. Um, I have not. So, caveat: I have not tried the regular portal yet. Uh, that's sealed the in the one box. That we got. Yeah. 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 So I don't know what the audio quality is like on that one, but the Go had. Pretty awesome audio. Well, and you said the Go was designed as a speaker, yeah. portable speaker as well. Right. So. so so, that particular device, the audio quality, both spoken because you could see that interaction. Okay. And the audio quality just coming from the device was very good. Okay. So I think, you know, tablet devices have tiny microphones. Yeah. Not great speakers. Okay. So, but from the portability perspective, so I see what not, you're saying. But I, I can see, okay, so that would be a good, a good differential. Exactly. Then, is the um, audio quality, okay. But the, the panning thing is kind of cool. Um, I've started to do that. With, I have a plugin called NVIDIA Broadcast. So in my videos now, I don't go off camera because it'll actually that's pan nice. with me, which that's is kind of cool. Yeah, from a content creator's perspective, that's really cool, um, actually. So that that on the portal, honestly, we can't use it to make videos, but we could use it for like this type of conversation. Absolutely. Like we could totally do a Zoom call or what have you and utilize those features uh, with the portal. We could have legitimately from room to room in the hotel. I actually had that idea. Yeah. At one point. Yeah. The, we, we could have just done that mm-hmm. for this video. Okay. Um, well, but, I can't. I can't wait to try mine. I mean, it, yeah. it, you know, it's definitely something that uh, we will be doing another portal call. We had right. talked about that, a uh, little coast to coast portal call. Yeah, um, kind of check it out. But, uh, but yeah, very. Just once again, I mean, just blown away um, that that was in our bag, and yeah. uh, you know, it's definitely something. Yeah, as a Star Trek fan, it's the view screen, guys. I mean, you know, yeah. it's like I've, I've been preaching that for years. Our phones have had that uh, capability for years, and, right. and you know, nobody uses it. I mean, you do very rarely see it and i would love to see us get to a point where we do have more face-to-face interaction and yeah. more technology that allows face-to-face interaction and collaboration so the, the thing about a phone is a phone screen is not very big no it's not i mean so, even, even the larger phones is right. still five six inches max right. so and that's kind of the differential between the portal devices also is the size of the screen i agree um but there are some limits to the portal as well. Uh, while it has some portal apps, you can get most of those web meeting applications legitimately loaded on. Let's say you want to watch one of our YouTube videos. You have to go into the web browser. Interesting. And type in youtube.com. So no app for that. So there's not, it's a very limited app. Uh, so, actually, so, so, let's so, talk about that. So, so, so That's kind of like the end real life. App for that. No, stop. We're not talking about it. So, so we'll it, do a it, whole other thing about the state of AR and in real at some point. I'm but sure. it, it, but it's, it's just it's got a very limited actual app library, and everything else is really just accessing the web, uh, which is okay. But I'd like to see. And, and it, I mean, honestly, like these devices have been out for a couple of years. I, th- I felt like if they really wanted to expand it, they would have done it by now. They have expanded which, and, which meeting services work, and they've added a couple of like recipe services and things like that. But it's not at a level where it's like going to so, Google Play or the Apple. And, and that, that kind of brings us back. So, so you know, we both kind of agree that this might have been tech that was kind of born out of the pandemic. And now that we're kind of right. getting into the 
hopefully in stages of all of that, um, you know, or closer to that, uh, you know, I could see that maybe that that would not be something that would be worked on as much. Right. Um, so an experiment that I really want to do with this device. Okay. I use Oculus.com casting for oh. all of my videos. Interesting. Don't I want to that. see if I can open Oculus.com slash casting on a portal device, use the camera from the portal to track me, and maybe not need to leverage the computer as much. I do not think this is going to work, but it's going to be an experience. But I'll tell you what, that's an interesting hypothesis. Exactly. It, 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 you just got my wheels turning. So... so Right now, the portal is not useful for anything VR, AR, except for these AR filters. He's got the AR filters. Yeah, yeah. but you can do the good again, my, my, my dear friends at Snap have AR filters. Instagram's had AR filters for a long it's time. It's not a new thing. It's not a new thing. It's cool that it's integrated into the device. I didn't need five minutes so, of people explaining that to so, me. And okay, so that, I mean, really that brings, since it's not a new thing, mm -hmm. and... You know, we, we you're talking it may have be slightly abandoned. Does it have a place in the meta store? Absolutely. It's a product that was developed and demonstrates the current state of their vision. Okay. And I think that over time that current state is going to be updated. I agree. These products have been updated. There was a refresh in 2020, a refresh in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it added new capabilities outside of, like I said, expanding what services it works with. Uh, but that little example I gave you about Oculus.com slash casting, that type of thing could make this a device that's a tool that you use with not just that screen AR and VR devices in the future. Interesting. I could see how that could be developed into something else. I could see that vision. So, my last thoughts, and please carry on with your own, yeah, about yeah. the Metastore experience are really, it's a great demonstration of the products that Meta, either as Facebook, Oculus, the headsets in the store were not Meta Quest headsets yet. They were all still Oculus Quest 2s, which I thought was kind of funny. I did too. Since the Meta, since the Meta Quest branding is on the devices I, I in other say, stores. I was going to say, I picked up every one of them looking yep. for that logo. I did too. And not one of them had it. But, yeah. that's a, but they're, they were still pre-launch. They were, you know, but I don't think that's I don't think that's going to change. Time. Yeah. You know? So, I have a feeling we got a little stock to sell off. So, so that see. so that that was interesting to me though because there there are actually yeah. branded Meta products now out there. Yes. Uh, the portals all said either portal by Facebook or Facebook portal depending on what generation product it is. Uh, the Ray Ban stories obviously don't have a Meta logo on them either because they're made by Luxottica. So, exactly. it's interesting to go to a Meta store and recognize these are definitely products that are being developed by Meta, but with all of the other brands still attached to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's probably going to change in the future. Well, I, I have a feeling that'll change in the very near future. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, they're, they're being pretty bullish about the brand change. Right. And, you know, I mean, they really want to kind of incorporate everything under that Meta umbrella, right. so to speak. So, uh, But I would say from a... Should I travel to Berlin Game, California just to go experience the Meta Store? No. No. Uh, if you're in the area and you're already a VR enthusiast and you want to go check out Reality Labs campus, it's a beautiful waterfront place. Oh, it was gorgeous. There's a giant public trail that goes along that waterfront toward the airport or away from the airport. It is a beautiful, beautiful place to visit. You happen to be in the area and you want to get a coffee from the coffee shop that's there or what have you you they can also there. just saying <laughs> they have tea as well and other drinks uh but if you want to go this is not sponsored by, it's not sponsored by anyone anybody. i just like coke and they didn't sell it but okay. um 
let's talk about Xbox. Um, so, so I feel like the store experience itself uh, is something that if you're in the area and you want to drop by and see what it's all about, it's cool. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to bring a lot of non-VR enthusiast traffic in the beginning. I don't think so in the beginning. I, you know, and I agree, you know, my final thoughts on it. It, it was a very well laid out concept store. And I've seen quite a few concept stores in my day. Okay. Um, once again, do I think that we're going to see this rolling out to malls near you anytime soon? Probably not. Um, do I think you should travel to come to this? Like Eric said, no. Absolutely not. You live in the area though, come check it out. It, it is a really cool space with some really dedicated, passionate employees who know their stuff. And I, you know, I, I would say if I was a first time user of VR looking to have a, a really good demo experience and just really was just curious about the technologies exactly. and some of the technologies that kind of led up to it, then yes, absolutely. If you're in the area, come check it out, guys, when they open. It, it, it is it definitely an experience that you'll want to have. So I also want to stress that it is extremely close to San Francisco International Airport. Uh, very. So if you come to San Francisco for a business or what have you, mm -hmm. it is literally down If you're the staying road. on the little island here with the hotels, make the walk. It's worth yeah. it. So so that's that's kind of the first half of the first day of our adventure so far. Yeah, that was. I, you know, and, and the rest of it really was was more geared towards us as content creators. I mean, we we got to see the main Meta Campus, some of it. I want to change that <coughs> wording a little bit. The rest of it was really for the quest ambassadors no, okay. specifically okay i get it I, um, I, I say content creators because we did have specific discussions that are yeah, it, yeah. but it, it's not entirely about content creation is what i want to focus on no, i agree uh, i agree we after going to the meta store which is at the berlin game uh, reality labs campus uh, which is where a ton of focus is happening at the current time to grow VR and AR. It is not the only campus that's happening in, but like that's kind of the no, Reality that's, that's Labs their, HQ their, their, at this their point. Deal, yeah. Uh, we had some a quick lunch there uh, on campus, and then we took a shuttle over to the what they call Menlo Park Classic Campus now. Classic, which I call. <laughs> They're gonna have the light. <laughs> which, <laughs> which, like which Park light. I call. <laughs> Sun Microsystem yeah, main Sun campus. Yeah, Sun Microsystems main campus. I thought it was funny as hell that the one hacker way sign said Sun Microsystems on the back of it. I just so point that out. I thought that was great. I've been to the Menlo Park campus a, a number of times, um, and one of the very cool things is it is a very environmentally friendly campus. Extremely. Anything that was there when they got there, when they acquired it from Sun Microsystems, they reused as much as, of it as they could, but they also have, and we didn't get to experience much of this, very nice rooftop gardens they have very nice they, there's well, the there's whole, the plants place, and trees everywhere well first of all i'm you know and i don't want to spend a lot of time talking about that because we didn't do a lot there right but it did it looked like disneyland i mean it looked like main street going down a damn amusement park with like shops and 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 candy places and, and arcades and it was just awesome i mean i can't believe that that was a place of business it it, it just blew my mind uh, it, it's tech companies, particularly in the Silicon Valley, would like their employees to never leave. I, I could see that it was set up for that particular. So, it was like a whole city. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's there's a lot of food options. Uh, there's dental. There's doctors. There's places to get haircuts. Uh, there's an arcade, which is honestly my favorite part of that no, campus. No, that was great. I, I love it. Uh, so it's a Japanese-style arcade. I'm sorry that I'm only talking about that, but it's honestly my favorite place in, on, in that campus. I've visited it. Um, and it, it's it's a very cool little 
place to defocus or de-stress for the employees um, and their visitors who take advantage of playing puzzle bobble for hours at a time. <laughs> Um, one of the cool things about going to the arcade is we had some of the ambassadors had never experienced some of the games like Dance Dance Revolution. Oh, yeah. Um, and watching them play that game for the first time was a ton of amusement for me. Very fun. Um, Meta's campus was mostly closed. Yes. Um, which I really didn't care because... I've been there, but I'm sure for the other ambassadors was a little bit of a letdown uh, because we couldn't experience the other shops or the other amenities that were there. Even if we were popping our heads in, like we couldn't do that because it was all yeah, closed it was, off. It was, it was all done. Uh, and some of that is because employees aren't really going into that campus on a regular basis. They're starting to. There's, I think they said around 15 to 20 percent. I think they're, they're returning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but a lot of employees have shifted to working from home. Uh, they had to during the pandemic as a necessity, but people are doing that as a regular thing now. Uh, so there's less people there, so there's less reason to have all of those yeah, open. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they also only open the restaurants for a specific set of hours for lunch and a specific set of hours for dinner. We are kind of there in the middle. So we didn't get to go to a lot of things there. But the main reason we were there, and none of us, there was no real shared with us agenda, not I will for the, say. Not for this part. Um, they they casually said we would be going to the Meta store, and that was basically it. Um, and it, there, there was a day two that was also very vague, where they said, you'll be doing a tour of San Francisco. I didn't know what that meant, Which and I live here. Great. Uh, we'll talk about that after this, uh, but yeah, as briefly as we can. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's, um, it's just touring San Francisco. So, you know. Yeah. But while we were at the Menlo Park campus, uh, we had a panel discussion with some of the people that actually truly do build out the tools, experiences, and games that we live in our content. It was awesome talking to those guys. And I don't want to say any of their names right now because I don't remember all five of their names right this minute because I am tired. Very. But you will see that in my video. I will say that the panel was moderated by Ruth Bram from Oculus Studios. And... The moment that sticks with me is that she really, first of all, all of these people could have worked from home and they came and into they, the they campus came to see us. To, to see, yeah, to see us. I mean, that, um, that was just. But she made some statements early in the conversation. Uh, and again, some clips of this I'll put out and I'm sure Don will too. And. 12 eventually, other people will as well. Yeah, yeah, you'll um, have a lot of But this she made a statement about how important we are to the Oculus ecosystem. The work that we do, whether it be socializing releases of games, whether it be making video content, making, sharing photos of things, sharing our excitement, which is genuine, uh, living as truly virtual reality kind of pioneers still. No, still. I mean, we're still in the beginning of all this. Uh, and acknowledging that we make a difference to the work that they're doing on a daily basis too. Because that work that they do uh -huh. is what inspires us to do, to what, do what we, we do. do. Exactly. Um, it's, such a, it's such a symbiotic relationship. And... So the discussion was, first of all, truly a discussion. There was supposed to be a format, I think, maybe, I don't, maybe that was yeah, a joke. It went off the I rails really quick. No, I think there was a format that just literally turned into a really nice, candid discussion. And we, we had representatives. Uh, we have a particular meta contact, again, not naming names, mm -hmm. uh, that works with all of us as part of this program. Um, and 
they arranged to have the people that work on particular products or particular areas within the company that we could provide feedback to or that we would have questions for. Obviously, many of those questions are things that they could not give us answers to, but we had so many actual exchanges amongst our group with them uh, and vice versa, mm -hmm. honestly, through that I, conversation I yeah. uh, that really, I mean, it, it, there's a game called The Sims uh, where you have to try to satisfy the life of your characters and they call it a sim meter where like you want to keep it at a high range. If my sim meter when I went into this session was low because I'm just like, I'm tired of making VR content. That wasn't the case, but it may have been for some of the people that were in that room. Uh, it refueled me for the, it's all the duration. Um, and it's very encouraging to talk to the folks on the other side of things. And mm -hmm. Don, I, I know you do this too. Like I, I reach out to developers on All a daily time. basis and I talk to different developers, whether they're indie or big, I don't care who they are. They're in this VR thing with us. We're all a community. And I've been to multiple Oculus Connect events. And I love those experiences of talking to the developers, whether it's in a hallway, in presentations, in the big expo hall, which typically has nothing to do with developers for whatever reason, um, in hotel suites, what have you. Mm -hmm. But I've never really, until this, had that back and forth yeah. with the people directly at Oculus, outside of like tiny little, little exchanges. Little exchanges here and there, but not on that level of interactivity. Exactly, and I didn't feel like we were just there because we were special. I felt like as ambassadors, we were there and we were representing the rest of the community. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, you know, another thing is I felt like we were heard. I do too. Um, and there are things that are completely outside the control of the people that were on this panel. Quite a few. Even yeah. though some of them are at executive level within the company, there's a passion there to give us better tools, to give us better games, to give us better experiences. They really want to make this spectacular. I mean... And I think... They were honest about right now it's not there. No, and that, that and right, we're just there are limitations. So it was it was a very good conversation and again, it was really geared toward those of us that came in as quest ambassadors to have this experience at the store and this ex experience with them. But it really shows what a value every single individual in the VR community has. Mm -hmm. And I've not had this experience with another brand yet. I can't say like I've gone and I, I, I have great relationships with other manufacturers oh, yeah. of devices and other studios, but I've not had this kind of full circle exchange at the, at the felt, level that we had. Different. This, this definitely felt different. And I feel like at least that those people in that room with us are focused on providing the best virtual reality and potentially future augmented reality experience that they can. And I think if those people weren't at Meta anymore, uh -huh. they would have that same passion. I agree. Um, and that, again, was something that was just like, okay, mm -hmm. we, we all get this. The session had absolutely nothing to do with Meta as a brand, really. Mm -hmm. It had to do with our passion for virtual reality. Exactly. And our thoughts, uh, whether it be about Meta, whether we talked about an upcoming product called the PlayStation VR 2. We talked about 
for a very brief window of time, I believe, the Pico Neo. That was very, yeah, very brief. Um, but it wasn't focused on, there was no sales pitch. There was no, no agenda. Rah, 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 no it was talking about what we do like I said, it was a and very what candid they conversation. do. Yeah, exactly. And I really, I, I, I will be sharing at least a portion of that because I think it really acknowledges Same. not just us as ambassadors, but it acknowledges all of those people I want, within I want, the community. I want, I want the people in our community to see the, the level of passion that these people had when they were talking about their individual products, like exactly. Resident Evil 4. And I mean, just just all of the, the, the excitement and passion and, and blood, sweat, and tears that went into making that yeah. for us, you know, to make it the best game that we could possibly have and not just, like they, they rehashed over and over again, not just a port. It's right. not just a port. We're not wanting to just port. And, and that spoke volumes to me. The same. I, I, feel, I feel the same way there. Uh, it was... That that was kind of the the big moment for me yeah. it, in that campus visit uh, because I felt like it was no longer just about hey it's ambassadors touring a campus it was about having candid discussions and extending the relationship that yeah. we already have with these folks deeper collaboration exactly yeah. and and. And by deeper collaboration, again, I don't think it's necessarily a, hey, no, the 14 no. of you that came to our campus, we're going to give, there's no special treatment. No, it's not, it's not across the meant, community. Yeah, not what I meant in any way, shape, or yeah. form, just really picking our brains to make improvements, improvements to exactly. everybody's experience. Exactly. So. Um, because this question will be asked, I really don't think new creator tools are coming in the month of May, no. and I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just, uh, yep, yeah, that's that's all we need to talk about. For that. Um, so we we had a nice walk around what Don described as kind of like a Disneyland, uh, it, it, Main Street USA, I guess. Well, basically. yeah, that's what I just meant, like you know, like a yeah. like an amusement park Main. Yeah, Street. I, I um, figured there should be vendors on the sides and like, right. trying to sell me teddy bears and, and stuff. It's like, and that kind of is what it's like it um, has that atmosphere i mean it, it, it but not in an amusement park kind of way and just like you said in a i want to make sure that everything and a potential employee here at meadow or facebook or whatever you want to call it these days sun microsystems would, sun microsystems exactly would would need you know throughout their day you know, i mean just all right there for them so i mean it was really catered towards the that experience so yeah um so that that was kind of in a nutshell our first day uh we had a nice dinner with with the folks that we work with from both the third party organization and and meta and passed out because mm. we were exhausted Very so. tired. like we are now um like so I'm about to do <laughs> yeah so it, it was it was literally a Get up at eight thirty, hike over to the Meta campus. I was like, oh, oh, sorry. And we didn't get back until like ten o'clock at yeah. night. Um, but none of it was a force anything down your throat. It nope. was it was literally just what we just described. Exactly. Uh, the second day, which was today, uh, also started around nine o'clock. Uh, it is now twelve thirty something. Yeah, I got. I can't really see. Morning. So I yeah. Um, but Don, tell people what we did today. Um, well, um, considering that you know you live in this neck of the woods and I don't, we <laughs> did all the tourist stuff, and yeah. it was awesome. And of course, you know anybody who does follow me, I have been posting this stuff all day long, all you know the whole trip. Uh, but man, we, we just went out and did all of the sightseeing, kind of like Eric was talking about in the beginning. It was like having that pre-planned trip to an amusement park. We're going to hit this and this and this and this and this and this. Had an awesome tour bus guide, took us to all the right spots. According to Eric, he definitely was the right guy because he knew where to take us to go to the Golden Gate. Um, just, just amazing. And, and, and it wasn't so much for me, you know, once again the experience of coming and seeing this iconic, you know, beautiful city that you see in all these postcards and movies and television shows all your life. 
but it was getting to experience all of that with these guys. You know, and, and that that was awesome. Exactly. Just everyone's excitement and everybody playing off of that. Exactly. And it, it was just great. And I used it for a couple of things. Uh, I pulled the Ray-Ban stories, and a lot of us did, because we just got oh, them. It's a shiny new so toy. so many Ray-Ban stories and so many um, Oculus sweatshirts yeah, today. It wasn't it, fun. But, but I... <laughs> I pulled them out and I exclusively used them and took photos all all day with them. I, I it got dark, so I didn't do that anymore because I didn't want to have sunglasses on my face. Um, <laughs> and I will also say Bless this you. is kind of an important thing. You had a low temperature error on yours. I did. That that was now we were under some pretty extreme conditions on the boat on the way out to Alcatraz. I mean, like super windy, super cold, damp. I, but yeah, I did actually, and I was really surprised that I got a message on my phone screen. I went to take a shot right as Alcatraz was kind of coming through the fog. And I wanted to capture that on video, and I wanted to get it from my first-person perspective using the the Ray-Bans. And I looked down at my phone because I'm like, I'm not hearing the recording indicator go off. And I look down, and sure enough, it does. It says that I would have to wait for my glasses to warm up uh, before I could take any more pictures or videos. And you know, I've used other camera devices. I've used other, you know, my cell phones. I've used webcams. I've used all sorts of stuff in like almost sub freezing temperatures and I've never had that problem. So that kind of threw me off a little bit. I'm not going to lie. And one of the things that at least here we have mountains, we can go skiing, we can do things like that. I would love to have this type of thing for that because well, you, you can record going downhill and things of that nature. First person perspective. And yeah. you know, you want eye protection because it's so bright on the snow. Like so that's a, a win, perfect it's a win, win yeah, for winter sport. Exactly. Yeah. Knowing that just in like some forty degree weather, it's already going to throw that low yeah, temperature. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Forty degrees. I that's, mean, we weren't even talking like snow weather. No, or, not at all. Uh, so, so that was that was kind of a surprise. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something that they can fine tune with this particular generation of these glasses, but I would hope that in the future that that's something I, that's know, fixed. And, it, and it's something that I will kind of put to the test a little bit. I do plan on putting these through their, their paces a little bit more, and then maybe even covering them in their own standalone video over on my channel with my thoughts on them. And you know, that's definitely the only thing so far that has kind of set me back that and the video quality could be a little bit better but but that was like hmm that was a head scratcher yeah. it was like wow i wasn't expecting um, that on day one the other thing that i do want to mention is one of the other ambassadors david duggan has a phone that for some reason it was a huawei it's a huawei or huawei. Yeah, huawei. Yeah. Huawei, 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 however you say that um I don't know. again how, however you say that we're both right. very tired yes uh but he has a, a, a device that absolutely just would not accept the glasses but for whatever reason. But it met the minimum requirement of the right. Android version that it needed. Exactly. For the so I, so. I, I think, at least from an Android ecosystem perspective, there's a risk that now, you buy these glasses and they don't work with your current device and, today and, you know and today and you know and and here's the thing and i think i was the one who we were sitting at dinner and i pointed that out immediately yeah on this on the box bottom here of the box it straight up says made for apple iphone or maybe yeah it was on the, it's are you it, it? no it's right there it okay. says made for iphone twice yeah it does not say anything about android so and i was kind of freaking out i was like is it even going to work with my phone right because you we know? both have android devices yeah um, for those that have iPhones, it also works great with your device oh, absolutely. Uh, because there's there's a well, mix of everything made here. for it. It's on the box. <laughs> so. uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so I use those exclusively for photos uh, throughout this tour. Uh, it was a pretty epic tour. As, as Don said, we kind of hit all the high spots throughout the city. There are a couple things we missed that I would have loved to have encountered with the group there's a lot of time crunch there. but I mean, there was both a time crunch and a fog crunch because there was a lot of fog because the fog really is a standard within san francisco and 
legitimately blocks your vision. You can't see anything. It's kind of a waste to go to some of these places, or it's actually dangerous to go to some of these places. So I understand why no, the tour I, was yeah, routed the way that it I, was. I, yeah, I fully um, understand. But we hit, hit a lot of the city. Well, we did. Um, we, we saw a ton. And people coming in from Europe, people coming in from other places that have never experienced San Francisco. I, don't, I think this was really your first time in San Francisco properly. We I drove across the Golden Gate, drove through parts of San Francisco on the way to Sacramento one time. But, sure. but no, I've never actually been in the city, done the tourist stuff, yeah. seen the, the views that we saw today. Yeah, so, so. so we had a pretty epic tour in the day, had a nice dinner to... Well, it's kind of lunch, but mm. it became our only meal of the day. So I'm going to call it dinner. Um, and then went out to Alcatraz for a night tour. Uh, I had a little bit of boat sickness. Yeah, you did. Um, it kind of impacted my impression of, of Alcatraz as a whole. Not that I'm really into going to prisons, but and I don't really want to go back. Honestly, don't go to prison. I don't recommend it. Uh, this one maybe as a tourist, but don't in general go to prison. If you like ghosts and things of that nature or true crime, I that type of thing. I would love to have actually done the later tour, the night tour thing where they did maybe do some of the ghosty stuff, but that That was... honestly only happens around Halloween here. Really they don't they don't do it all year. All like, I know is that's all my kids could talk about, yeah. so I took as much video as I can, kids. Sorry. Just Yeah, so know. so yeah, that's that's unfortunately a. But overall, a it was thing. it was definitely cool seeing it once again. This is something you know you, you've seen the movie The Rock. You know, I mean, you, you've seen like this is an iconic thing that you've seen all your life, and actually to see it in person. Um, and as a San Francisco Bay Area resident, I'd never been to Alcatraz. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was very familiar with a lot of the locations that we went to because I encountered them here, yeah, whether absolutely. it being... You were telling the tour guide where yeah, to go at certain it's points. It, I, I, <laughs> You're like, I hey, worked, park over here, do this. Do yeah, I, I worked in San Francisco for nearly 20 years. Like, I, I, I know where the spots are as mm. almost as intimately as this guy. This guy had, had all the right stuff, though. Um, great tour. Uh, again, organized by the by the folks that brought us out here, um, which are a third party company that's supporting us and supporting Meta. Um, they really made this trip something special for yeah, us. Yeah, I, I agree. And every day that I'm in this program, I honestly feel extremely fortunate um, because we have a small incubator of a community that I hope makes a difference for the VR community as a whole. Big time. Um, and that's really what our goal is, is to make, it, first of all, expose people to virtual reality experiences from small, medium, large developers, small, medium, large experiences, honestly, to be really? honest. Um, and whether that be with an Oculus device, Vive, Pimax, Pico, whatever, it, it doesn't, it, 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 if you have something that kicks ass, mm -hmm. we're going to check it out. Oh, heck yeah. And... I love the fact that we have people now actually listening to that yeah. and helping us to improve that, whether it be painful, gradual, has to go through software, QA, go through trying to get into a release cycle, which I am, as a day job, I, I'm an implementation manager. Like, that's what I listen to all day. So I can picture that happening and see why things like legal holdups hold specific software releases in countries outside of the United States. Yeah. Why certain features are being held back because they might somehow degradate the quality of frames per second that you get in your cell. Like these types of things are things I deal with every day outside of VR. 
So I understand that that's happening. There's, it happens. It's been there's there, there's there's an entire tug of war from multiple teams that cause things to not happen the instant that people can make it happen, mm -hmm. and that makes things that you really want to have today potentially come two to three years later. To be perfectly honest, which is typical, and. I just I don't want people to have the impression that conversations that even other content creators have had conversations with even some of the same people we talk to, to be honest. And those people are still working on it. They haven't given up on you. They haven't abandoned it. The, it's like the old Verizon commercial. It, it is a problem and we are working on it. Right. Yeah, so, so they acknowledge they know it is a problem. Exactly. And and their picture of what they want to see is really, I felt, pretty closely aligned with what we want to I, see. I agree. And we're going to get there. I agree. I agree. It's just going to take some time. So that's kind of what the last couple of days for Don and I have been. In a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, nice little recap there. It's. It, I planned this to be about 40 to 45 minutes. Yeah, not when we get together. We, Never. We, we, we talk. So um, I'm trying to think of final thoughts from, from my perspective. Uh, you know, I think we've covered all the thoughts, man. I just, you know, final thoughts. It was great. It was. It was uh, great. It was much needed. It was much appreciated. And, and I can't wait to do it again. And what I really hope is that we have things like Connect Again. Big that we time. have things where... Connect where the community at large can come together and celebrate the technology that we have so much passion for. Uh, I want to tell you all my favorite moment of this trip. Don and I were in the visitation area at Alcatraz. <laughs> <sighs> and there's that little window. Mm -hmm. And we recreated one of my favorite scenes. Yes. Well, let's go no, this No, way. you got to go that way. I did the same problem at the, at, at the actual thing. Yep. Uh, he used to do this thing where he did that and said, peace. Every, every freaking video. Peace. Uh, yeah, wait, peace. Yeah. But uh, thank you for spending however long this has been with us. Long, but productive. Um, I just wanted to get out our impressions while it's fresh in our Big minds, time. while we're here. Big time. Still in Burlingame, exhausted. Um Check out some VR for yourselves. If you have questions about anything we talked about here, whether it be the Quest Ambassador program, content creation for any type of VR, AR, these new shiny things that anything. they gave us, uh, cool places to go in San Francisco, how many hours Don has to fly in a plane tomorrow, like just, a lot of them. Just drop it in the comments. Uh, we're going to put this on both of our channels, uh, so uh, please be participatory. Yeah. Talk to us, uh, yeah. because just like what we've done the past couple of days, having conversations about how things can improve, we want to improve too. Yeah. We want to give you the content that you want to see on our channels. Absolutely. Uh, we, we care a lot about... A lot about each and every one of you, whether you're watching this or ignoring this. And thank you for loving VR or watching us ramble. If you hate VR, don't hate VR, please. Don't hate VR, love VR. Love your brothers, love your sisters, love VR, love each other. We're out. Peace. <laughs>